and the unique result of this preservation-based approach, which is intuitively counter to many, is that this logical, ground-up, empirical process of preservation and efficiency, which can only define true human sustainability on this planet, would likely enable something never before seen in human history. Access abundance, not just for a percentage of the global population, but the entire civilization. This economic model, as was just generalized, this responsible systems approach to total earth resource management and processes, designed again to do nothing less than take care of humanity as a whole in the most efficient and sustainable way, could be termed a resource-based economy. The idea was defined in the 1970s by structural engineer Jacques Fresco. He understood back then that society was on a collision course with nature and itself, unsustainable on every level. And if things didn't change, we would destroy ourselves one way or another. Are all these things you're saying, Jacques, uh, could they be built with what we know today, or are some of these things, are you guessing based on what we know today? No. All of these things can be built with what we know today. It would take 10 years to change the surface of the earth to rebuild the world into a second Garden of Eden. The choice lies with you. The stupidity of a nuclear arms race, the development of weapons, trying to solve your problems politically by electing this political party or that political party, that all politics is immersed in corruption. Let me say it again. Communism, socialism, fascism, the Democrats, the liberals, we want to absorb human beings. All organizations that believe in a better life for man, there are no Negro problems, or Polish problems, or Jewish problems, or Greek problems, or women's problems. They're human problems. I'm not afraid of anybody. I don't work for anyone. No one can discharge me. I have no boss. I am afraid to live in the society we live in today. Our society cannot be maintained by this type of incompetency. It was great, the free enterprise system, about 35 years ago. That was the last of its usefulness. Now we've got to change our way of thinking or perish. The horror movies of the future will be our society, the way it didn't work. And politics would be part of a horror movie. Well, lots of people today use the term cold science because they're analytical. And they don't even know what analytical means. Science means closer approximations of the way the world really works. So it's telling the truth is what it is. A scientist doesn't try to get along with people. They tell them what their findings are. They have to question all things. And if some scientist comes up with an experiment that shows certain materials have certain strength, other scientists have to be able to duplicate that experiment and come up with the same results. Even if a scientist feels that an airplane wing, due to mathematics or calculations, can hold up a given amount of weight, they still pile sandbags on it to see when it breaks. And they say, you know, my calculations are right, or they're not correct. I love that system because it's free of bias and free of thinking that math can solve all the problems. You have to put your math to test also. I think that every system that can be put to test should be put to test and that all decisions should be based upon research. A resource-based economy is simply the scientific method applied to social concern, an approach utterly absent in the world today. Society is a technical invention, and the most efficient methods of optimized human health, physical production, distribution, city infrastructure, and the like, reside in the field of science and technology, not politics or monetary economics. It operates in the same systematic way as, say, an airplane, and there is no Republican or liberal way to build an airplane. Likewise, nature itself is the physical referent we use to prove our science, and it is a set system, emerging only from our increased understanding of it. In fact, it has no regard for what you subjectively think or believe to be true. Rather, it gives you an option. You can learn and fall in line with its natural laws and conduct yourself accordingly, invariably creating good health and sustainability, or you can go against the current to no avail. It doesn't matter how much you believe you can just stand up right now and walk on the wall next to you, 
The law of gravity will not allow it. If you do not eat, you will die. If you are not touched as an infant, you will die. As harsh as it may sound, nature is a dictatorship, and we can either listen to it and come in harmony with it, or suffer the inevitable adverse consequences. So, a resource-based economy is nothing more than a set of proven, life-supporting understandings where all decisions are based upon optimized human and environmental sustainability. It takes into account the empirical life ground, which every human being shares as a need, regardless, again, of their political or religious philosophy. There is no cultural relativism to this approach. It isn't a matter of opinion. Human needs are human needs, and having access to the necessities of life, such as clean air, nutritious food, and clean water, along with a positively reinforcing, stable, nurturing, and non-violent environment, is demanded for our mental and physical health, our evolutionary fitness, and hence the species' survival itself. A resource-based economy would be based upon available resources. You can't just bring a lot of people to an island or build a city of 50,000 people without having access to the necessities of life. So when I use the term a comprehensive systems approach, I'm talking about doing an inventory of the area first and determining what that area can supply, not just architectural approach, not just design approach, but design must be based on all of the requirements to enhance human life. And that's what I mean by an integrated way of thinking. Food, clothing, shelter, warmth, love, all those things are necessary. If you deprive people of any of them, you have a lesser human being, less capable of functioning.